Hi friends, welcome to Diagnox. Today I am going to discuss a very important topic that's wisdom teeth removal and paresthesia. What to do? The most common question asked to me by many of my patients is that can I develop numbness after removal of impacted teeth or how difficult is it to remove the impacted teeth and in this presentation, I will be explaining how can we preoperatively guess whether the patient would develop paresthesia and if in case the patient develops paresthesia, what to do. The only preoperative method to diagnose and manage a wisdom teeth issue is radiograph. And the first half of this presentation we will discuss the radiographic technique employed for removal of wisdom teeth and how to choose them since there are many imaging modalities. The surgical removal of lower third molars endangers both the lingual and inferior alveolar nerves because of the close proximity of the nerves to the roots of the impacted teeth. Many studies have reported the frequency of nerve injury during the removal of third molars and most indicate that the inferior alveolar nerve function is disturbed in 1.3 to 7.8 percent of the cases and most patients will regain normal sensation within few weeks or months and less than 1 percent have a persistent sensory disturbance. In clinical practice, the most commonly used radiographic technique for evaluating third molar is IUPA. But when it comes to impacted teeth, there is always a possibility that the root apex of the impacted teeth and its relationship to inferior alveolar canal is not completely captured in IUPA radiograph. We may get an image of similar type where an impacted teeth is overlapped onto the mylohyoid ridge and the inferior alveolar canal because of the excessive or exaggerated vertical angulation which we have given. So it's always wise to advise an OPG for patients with impacted teeth. OPG can give more details regarding the inferior alveolar canal and the position of impacted teeth. OPG gives us an idea of other infectious teeth, the temporomandibular joints, which helps the patient as well as the surgeon to plan the treatment in a better way. Inferior alveolar canal is seen radiographically as a radiolucent area starting from mandibular foramen and exiting at the mental foramen. Inferior alveolar canal has got a superior and an inferior radio-opaque cortex. Lying within the inferior alveolar canal is the inferior alveolar nerve and any procedures that can cause damage to this inferior alveolar canal and nerves will result in paresthesia. The association of inferior alveolar canal and impacted third molar can be assessed with certain radiographic signs. There are seven radiologic signs suggested by Ho and Whiten, whereas there are other five radiographic signs suggested by Root and Siha. The seven radiographic signs by Ho and Python are darkening of root, deflected root, narrowing of root, dark and bifid root, interruption of white lines, which are the cortical lines which I have already discussed, diversion of inferior alveolar canal and narrowing of inferior alveolar canal. If we see any of these signs, 
in two dimensional radiograph we can uh, suggest or we can guess there is an inferior alveolar canal or nerve involvement and this patient has a risk of developing paresthesia and i will be showing few radiographs and discussing these signs this is a opg of an adult patient with impacted 38 48 and also an supernumerary teeth which is attached to the distal aspect of 48 moving on to 38 you can see the 38 is mesioangularly impacted you can trace the superior as well as inferior cortex of inferior alveolar canal and at the root apex of 38 you can see a small narrowing of inferior alveolar canal which suggests that there is a possible canal compression and there is also always a possibility of paresthesia if in case a trauma is induced during extraction when it comes to 48 you can see the distal root of 48 is not clearly visible and there is a radio opaque mass attached to the distal aspect of distal root of 48 it could be a supernumerary teeth or it could be a complex odontome there is a radio lucency which is seen along the inferior alveolar canal which indicates that there is a definite darkening of inferior alveolar canal so there is a possibility of inferior alveolar canal and nerve involvement and there is always a possibility that this patient can develop paresthesia especially on the right side this is an opg of an adult patient with an impacted 48 the inferior alveolar canal is overlapped onto the roots of 48 there is neither narrowing of canal nor excessive enlargement of canal the cortex of the inferior alveolar canal appears intact and according to hoven poitens criteria this case is probably not nerve involved but we cannot be sure unless we take a 3d imaging that is cone beam computed tomography cone beam ct is an excellent imaging technique to assess the relationship of inferior alveolar nerve canal to the roots of impacted third molar CBCT has specialized softwares to track the inferior alveolar canal thereby giving us clear picture of what's there. I did a study on relationship of inferior alveolar canal in three different age groups using CBCT. Inferior alveolar nerve canal had a definite stable course. The canal was close to lingual cortex in the region of second and third molar thereby slowly moving buccally and it exits in the region of mental foramen buccally in these cross sectional images you can see the position of inferior alveolar canal in 47 region the canal had a lingual course whereas in 45 region the canal had a buccal course these are cbct images showing the relationship of inferior alveolar canal to the root apex you can see the tooth root being in contact with the superior cortex of inferior alveolar canal so why do we need 3d imaging because diagnostic information directly influences clinical decisions accurate data leads to better treatment planning decisions and potentially more predictable outcomes the symptoms of nerve injury can range from a simple burning sensation to a more complicated anesthesia of the regions supplied by those nerves and it also depends on the extent of nerve injury moving on to the management 
of paresthesia or anesthesia we have pregabalin prednisolone tricyclic antidepressants vitamin b complex and there is a brand called as renerve plus which has got alpha lipoic acid chromium folic acid b complex selenium and zinc which has shown promising results in nerve injury and paresthesia various studies have shown promising result in the use of pregabalin and prednisolone in early nerve injury pregabalin is a gaba analog with structure and actions similar to gabapentin it has got an anti epileptic analgesic action also it reduces the anxiety of the patient its ability to reduce neurotransmitter release from activated neurons in pain pathway and fear circuit may contribute to its role as an adjuvant in pain management also to reduce anxiety pregabalin is given in the dose of 150 mg per day in two divided doses steroids is also effective in healing of early nerve injury because it reduces the cytotoxic edema and improves nerve cell survival the dose of steroids it can be given as 1 mg per kg body weight there are also other drugs such as tricyclic antidepressants and vitamin b complex like a capsule of neurobion 4 which are effective in early nerve injury i would like to conclude this presentation by stating that nerve involvement or paresthesia is common during wisdom teeth removal opg is an important radiograph which helps us in treatment planning when in doubt it's better to have a 3d image before we proceed for this minor surgery thank you